Hello everyone. So in this lab exercise, we are going to create Azure Firewall. And we are going to test this Azure Firewall by creating some rules to block certain IP addresses or certain domains completely. And we're going to test this functionality in this lab. I hope you find this useful. So let's go and start this lab. As a network engineer or a security engineer in your company, your responsibility is to protect your Azure workload using various methods. One of the methods you can use is Azure Firewall. So, so in this exercise, we are going to go through various steps to configure and deploy Azure Firewall. I will show you some of the ways you can use Azure Firewall to configure your default route, application rule and network rule and test the Azure Firewall in action. So let's go and do that. One of the first tasks we are going to perform is to create a resource group and create virtual network and subnet. So let's start with creating a resource group. Let's go and click on resource groups and click on create resource group. I'm going to name the resource group as test firewall resource group and I'm going to keep the resource in East US and click on create. The next step after the resource group is we're going to create a virtual network and subnet. So let's go to resource group itself and I'm going to click on create within the resource group and I'm going to type in virtual network and click on enter and select the virtual network from Microsoft and hit create. The resource group is by default selected along with the subscription because we chose resource group and we created a resource within that. Under the instance name, I'm going to call virtual network. I'm going to type in and for the virtual network, I'm going to call it as test firewall virtual network and I'm going to keep it in East US itself. Next, click on IP addresses. Under address space, we have 10.0.0.0 slash 16. If you want, you can modify that and scroll down till you find subnet. Click on add a subnet. I'm going to create a new subnet called Azure Firewall subnet and address range. What I'm going to give is 10.0.1.0 slash 26 and click on add. Now come back to the subnet again and click on add one more subnet. This, this time name the subnet as workload subnet and the IP address as 10.0.2.0 slash 24. This is where all of our workloads like virtual machines and other workloads are going to remain and click on add. So we have added two subnets within our virtual network and click on review plus create. After the validation, click on create. Looks like our deployment is completed. So click on go to resource to see your test virtual network. So you can check the address spaces and you can make sure that your subnet is being created as well. So we have both and we can see the available IP address. So the next task is to create a virtual machine. So I have a template built for that. So I'm going to execute that template. So I'm going to use cloud shell. So let's run the command to create a virtual machine. So this would ideally take a minute or so to create the right virtual machine in the right subnet. So in the Azure portal, I'm going to quickly go back to the home page and click on virtual machine and see if we can see the newly created virtual machine. So this one is a legacy or an old virtual machine I use for a different lab. So don't worry about it. So it's in a different resource group. So the one we are looking forward to is the virtual machine going to be created under test firewall resource group. So we should be able to see a test firewall resource group here quickly. I'm going to hit refresh one more time. Oh yeah, you can see that there is a new server work is being creating right now under test firewall resource group. So I'm going to quickly hit refresh one more time to see that. Okay. So the, ref so the server is created and it is running. So you can click, you can click on the server work. I'm going to close the cloud shell and we can see that the VM is running and let's go to networking and we have a private IP address configured for this server, which is 10.0.2.4. Now that we have our virtual machine created in the next task, we are going to deploy the firewall and the firewall policy. So let's go back to the Azure portal on the home page. Click on create resource under the search box, type in firewall and search and select 
the firewall one which says it's from Microsoft. Click on create. I'm going to click on create. Subscription is being selected by default. Under resource group, I'm going to select the test firewall resource group we selected before or created before. Under name, I'm going to call it as test firewall one. I'm going to keep it as uh, the East US region, which is where we are keeping all of our resources. Availability, I'm going to keep it none. Under firewall tier, I'm going to change it to standard instead of premium. And under firewall management, make sure you choose use a firewall policy to manage this firewall. And under firewall policy, click on add new and give a name for your firewall policy. I'm going to call it as firewall test policy. And I'm going to keep it under East US as well and click on OK. Scroll down till you find choose virtual network and click on instead of create new use existing under virtual network select the test firewall network we created and the public IP address I'm gonna click on add new give a name I'm gonna call it as firewall public IP address and click OK now that now that we have populated all the details required for us to create the firewall hit on review plus create this will go through a validation process and after that we can start the deployment. So the validation is being passed. So now we can click on create. So the deployment is in progress. All right, so it looks like our deployment has been completed. You can click on go to resource to go and see the newly created Azure firewall. So under the overview plane, you can see that the firewall IP address is 10.0.1.4. Let's check the public IP address. So if you go to under settings under on the left hand side under settings you can check the public IP configuration so the public IP address of this firewall is 20.25.60.196 all right so now we have deployed the firewall the next what we're going to do is we're going to create a default route to create a default route go to your home page click on create a resource and type in route the route table will appear so click on route table and click on create make sure you select the right subscription we've been using which is test firewall resource group keep the region of choice which is east us right now and give a name for your route i'm going to call it firewall route and under propagate gateway routes make sure you choose yes and click on review and create and click on create after the deployment of this route table, we are going to create the actual route table inside that. So we, be, so we are waiting for the deployment to finish. All right, so the deployment of the route table is completed. So let's click on go to resource. This is the firewall route we just created. Under settings tab, click on subnets. We don't have any subnets associated. So first click on associate. All right, select the test firewall network then within the subnet select the workload subnet and click ok now again under settings this time click on routes and click on add give a name for your route i'm going to call it firewall dash dg under address prefix under address prefix i'm going to select ip address and the source ip as 0.0.0, .0 slash 0 next hop I'm going to select virtual appliance and next hop address we have to copy and put the firewall address so let's go to the Azure portal one more time I forgot to copy the IP address of the firewall let's find our firewall which is the test firewall 01 and the IP address of the firewall is 10.0.1.4 so I'm going to go back to the route table and I'm going to put that as the next hop address and click on add all right so now we have added our route the next task we're going to perform is we're going to configure an application rule so let's go back to the azure portal one more time and let's find the firewall policy we created so let's go to resource groups test firewall resource group i'm going to scroll down to find i'm going to sort it by type and this is the firewall policy we created which is firewall test policy so select that 
So what we are going to do right now is we are going to add an application rule that allows outbound access to google.com. So under settings, click on application rules and on the top, click on add a rule collection. So click on add a rule collection, give a name. I'm going to call it app collection 01 rule collection type as application priority. I'm going to give 200 the rule collection allow rule collection group. I'm going to leave the default under the rule section. I'm going to give the rule as allow Google source as IP address source 10.0.2.0 slash 24 protocol HTTP or HTTPS destination type FQDN and destination as google.com and click on add. So this is how you can add an application rule within the firewall policy. The policy deployment is in progress. So let's wait for a couple more seconds to complete that part. All right. So the rule has been successfully added. Now in the next task, we are going to configure a network rule. So to configure the network rule, this time we have to go to network rules under settings. So click on network rules. We don't have any rules yet. So click on add rule collection. Give a name. I'm going to call it net collection 01. Rule collection type as network priority. I'm going to give it again 200. Rule collection action as allow. Rule collection group. Default network rule collection group. Name of the rule. I'm going to add allow DNS. Source type as IP address. Source IP address is 10.0.2.0 slash 24. Protocol, I'm going to select UDP. Destination port 53. Destination type as IP address. And the destination is this IP address. And these are the public DNS servers operated by the CenturyLink. So what we are doing is we are adding a network rule that allows outbound access to two public IP address at port 53, which is DNS port and click on add. Now it is adding the network rule to the firewall policy. While that is happening, we can go and create a destination NAT rule. So that's so our next task is to configure a destination NAT rule. So while our deployment for the network rule is happening, so we can just quickly go and create the destination NAT rule. So click on DNAT rules. While that is happening, it is successfully added the rule collection. So we can come back to that later and click on add a rule collection. Give a name. I'm going to call it RDP rule collection type as DNAT priority again, 200 rule collection default which is destination network address translation or dnat rule collection and rule collection group as default default dnat rule collection group name rdp nat source ip address source asterisk protocol tcp destination port 3389 destination type as ip address and here we need to provide the destination of the firewalls public IP address. So let's go to our firewall, click on public IP configuration and let's copy this address and go back to the Azure portal and provide the public IP address and translated port 3389. Right. Okay. So let's put the destination IP address one more time. That's our public IP address for the firewall. Translated address, translated address port is 3389 and the translated port is the server IP address. So let's go and find the server IP address. Go home, the server work, click on networking and copy the network private IP address of the server 10.0.2.4. So translated address is 10.0.2.4 and the port is 3389 and click on add.
all right so now that task is completed in the next task we're going to do changing the primary and secondary dns address for the server network interface so go to the home page this time try to find the server and we need to find the network interface of the server go to networking and click on server work nic that is the network interface on the left hand side under settings click on dns servers so here we can provide the custom dns so again this is not a mandatory step so in the general azure firewall requirement you don't have to do that but we are just so i'm just showing you an option to change the primary and secondary dns server for the server if you want to do that in any case so click on custom and we're going to provide the public ip address and we're going to add one more and hit save so this is updating at the moment so we have to restart the server to take this change affected on the virtual machine so after this is complete i'm going to go back to the virtual machine and we're going to restart cool let's go to the server go to overview and restart yes all right so we have reached the final stage so in this final task we are going to test the firewall so what we're going to do is we're going to verify that the rules are configured correctly and working as expected this configuration will enable you to connect a remote desktop connection to the server through the firewall via the firewall's public ip address so let's go and test that the virtual machine is still restarting so we have to give couple more minutes to do our test all right so our virtual machine is restarted so let's go and test the firewall now so i'm going to open the remote desktop connection so go to my local machine and right click and click on run and type in mstsc so open the remote desktop click on show options here in the computer name i'm going to type in the firewall's public ip address so let's go back and find the firewall's public ip so i'm going to go home click on the firewall on the left hand side click on the public ip address i'm going to copy the public ip address of the firewall i'm going to put that as the computer name and use colon and enter port number 3389 and give a username for the computer so that's test user and i'm going to click on connect all right it is asking for credentials so provide the password for the server click okay yes all right so now we are using the public ip address of the firewall to connect into the server environment now we are in the server let's go and test if uh, the firewall rules are working or not so i'm going to launch the internet explorer let's quickly close all of this we don't want any of that let's launch the internet firewall sorry internet explorer accept the default settings because this is the first time we are logging into the server i'm going to accept the default and i'm going to type in www.google.com so we should be able to access this website all right so we are able to access google.com so now let's try www.microsoft dot com we should not be able to access it as you can see that let me increase it the action deny reason is no rule matched and proceeding with the default action which is deny action so we can access google dot com but not microsoft dot com because of the rule we have set cool so that's the end of the deployment and configuration of the firewall and configuring the rule i hope you find the information provided in this video helpful i will see you on the next one until then take care